yourself for the time period which is basically you know that you're older for this. It's just been a blessing to uh, have that type of training and that's also a management stuff. But he gave, people don't realize, he also gave a lot of second chances as well. Uh, and I don't think people understand it. He pushed people and he wanted to see how far he could go. And that's the only way you want to play. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, uh, I, we all have those gentlemen, because, you know, he, he yeah, yeah, yeah. He sure did. Absolutely. But I was just included. They didn't escape. Oh, they didn't escape, and he did it right for front of us. Like, I've never seen that in my entire life. I'll tell you, he held it in the You know, when I was out there doing uh, kickoffs, I had to go out and do these, uh, uh, these, these onside kicks for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the team, you know, so I didn't get my chance to go out and do my kickoffs. So after I did all the onside kicks, I get out there, and uh, I'm out there just trying to practice some kickoffs. But, uh, you know, next thing, you know, I had my kind of one that went like a little wider over the quarterback to me and goes, Grab him, he's kicking the ball! And I'm like, I went and I hit in the shed the rest of the day. And I'm like, well, everybody come by and say, well, you're a jazz dog house now, man. So, but, uh, you know, you never forget when you're younger. Yeah, I mean, everybody who was on that team had some uh, moment remembering when uh, Joe was, uh, you know, uh, at his best, I guess you could say, right? Absolutely. And that's what we're doing. And so, uh, because that was his style of coaching. Uh, and, and, and to be honest, I think that that man had nothing but the best of intentions for everyone. Sure, without a doubt. He, he really had the best of intentions. And, and being a human being, it might not have looked that way at the time, especially being 17, 18, 19, 22 years old, as some of us were coming through here. And even for the coach, he had stayed that in front of, in front of players, you know, in front of children, being essentially treated like a child and reprimanded, you know, in front of, in front of other children, but I, I think that his heart truly was in the right place. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, you know, you, you got yourself to a point in the game, the most rewarding thing to learn is him telling you that you got it, you just needed to hear it once. You know, uh, I think in my sophomore year, uh, I started that tackle before you all came to this guy named Stan Short, who told me a whole lot of different things. Stan had a short uh, stint in the NFL, uh, and he started for three years, but, you know, Stan goes down with the foreign team all week. I just wasn't having a good first year. Uh, well, I didn't understand, but he called me to go against all of the guys number Tim Green, who was one of the better defensive tackles in, in college football at the time. To go against him and just him let me know, hey, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Did he play for Maryland? He played for Syracuse, which is a game he made. I think he's also, he also played for the Falcons in the NFL. He was too small to play defensive tackle on the Falcons, but the guy was just tremendous. For him to look for me and look past other people, I don't know what it was if I got serious at some point. His whole thing is he should be ready to just go get it. There's nothing like that feeling in there. You know, and I used to show confidence in here. Absolutely. To see it. After I'm going to tell me, that's fine. And I made my 880s. I made my 880s. No, you did, man. You made my 880s. Of course, I was coming up to pull my hamstring to be 17 pounds in the weight. That's just a small problem. That's all right. The thing is, he had a back on him, knocking down and then building it back up at the right time. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. He had that crap and he knew what to do. He had it, bro. And he did get you early on your first year. But then, but then Blair, he would take a quote from Blair, you know, he said, why do you say, you got a smacker on me? And you know what, I didn't think he was listening, because he wouldn't say nothing real bad. You know, you know, Jack was reading the paper when he made these comments. Oh, man. I think if I remember, yeah, he told us to don't pay attention. That's the other thing, helping us to manage it and work with the media. I can't imagine social media how to even do that as a coach. Oh, my. I mean, what's the best way to handle social media as a coach? You know, everything's changed now with, with the way the uh, instant information age has come about. Because, uh, you know, back in that time, you know, things, things kind of trickled down, kind of trickled down effectively. It took a while before anybody kind of found out well, this guy did this or did the next thing. Uh, but nowadays, I mean, it, it's just instant information. Almost 20 minutes later, you snap a picture and not even snap a picture put it on Facebook, Instagram, right now. Right now, it's just too much. Right now. So as a coach, I, I couldn't imagine that. I think you have to try to... <laughs> And it's kind of hard because these guys are young. Uh, 
uh, every move set before them, uh, a lot of temptation after. You know, you may have to kind of become a dad to these guys and warn them about some of the, uh, the possible pitfalls of, of what they can get into. So uh, I'm sure it's not easy today trying to coach guys along with social media. Oh, yeah, and, and, and sometimes you're making an innocent comment. You know, I, I looked at one of my old articles in an amazing stand, of course, where I, they asked me what, what type of playing time would I get. And I said, well, and Stan had problems with his knee. I very simply said, Oh, he's, he's been injury prone, so I've been ready to wait. I was like, can I read it now? I'm like, can I really say that? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know what that would have been like on Facebook. Oh, my goodness. He made a was the worst teammate ever in every other thing. Right. It would have been terrible for a teammate to mentor on our life and shoot. We've never seen something like that. We've been able to win one day. 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 Uh, his father asked him, he's a four-star general. Uh, 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 he came from four good uh, Texas. Uh, 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 just a lot of uh, great uh, stuff. Uh, hey, uh, Skip uh, Mitchell, is there any questions uh, here? Uh, 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 we're uh, here. Uh, uh, we have two NFL uh, players. Uh, we have a guy that played uh, uh, four years here, uh, five uh, years uh, 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 Skip, uh, uh, Skip uh, knows all these uh, other things that we don't know. And he's done it. And let's keep the 75 ball field in front of us. Are there any questions, anything you're curious about? I mean, look at that. He's got a great job. I just got asked about Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. Yeah, all right. Jersey's going on. Yeah. I played against Paul Bob from the time we were in Pop Warner playing against one of them. And, yeah, it was always good, man. Because you said you were in love with him. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Paul's going to play him well in South Florida. And John Newton is a pair. He's in Harrisburg. He comes up to the games. He'll try to get him off for you. That's good. And any, any players that anybody would like to have on our show here, they, and the microphone's open for, uh, for all of us uh, who played at Penn State. So if you have a favorite player at Penn State, you'd like to come on our show. But we are the only football network out there that actually has a lot of players for you, the fans. So whoever your fans want to have us on, you can go to facebook.com slash for the lines. Uh, find us, contact us, let us know. We'll be happy to try to bring a, a lot of the guys back here. We, 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 last time we were uh, here for the stream games, we talked to guys like Franco and uh, Franco Harris and a lot of the other guys who uh, are looking forward to being a part of this show on the weekend. So kind of the nice part about what we're doing now uh, with this program is we're ramping up the fall and on any given day, game on a Monday, we're going to have guys coming back. We're going to have a full day in the microphone. So just always be sure to tune in. Uh, and listen to us on the frontlines.com. We'll stream the show uh, that way, and, and also uh, to Western Radio out there on uh, the uh, BLF on the AM side, on uh, 970, and all the efforts on the 106, and possibly other stations are starting to say they have cadence as well. But we are the only uh, network that's actually out here by the uh, uh, all the players for you, the fans. So uh, uh, be sure to let us know what you want to see and hear. And uh, you know, we'll really put them together picks. It should be a lot of fun as we uh, interact now with the social media. Uh, putting this program together each week. Yeah, absolutely. Now tell me, man, what, what, what is your name? This is Nance. Nance. How long have you been a Lions fan? And tell us all about your journey as a Lions fan. Let's hear about that. Did you, did you see the 16 play? What did you like about your journey as a Lions fan? Let's hear about that. Are you an athlete? Great. How was that before? Okay. That was a lot of fun, but I'll never forget that. I'll never forget the DBs walking down the street. There was a sign that said, it was the USC. It was very icy. It was Eddie Jones. Uh, Duffy Brown's name was Marcus Henderson. And the sign said, welcome to Smurf Turf. And they all walked down the street. There's my memory. Why did you lose got the elephant memory going on? Well, I'll never forget that. Great group of teammates. And what was the thing you enjoyed uh, watching? You got a good chance to watch him on TV? I saw you pick some players. But did you pick Paul because he was cute or did you? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know he broke his thumb down in Maryland, but he still made a touchdown. He's still hard to touch down. Oh, wow. He's like, 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 he's like,
Hey, let me tell you something about John Green. You know, along with Blair, I mean, that was a great part about my senior year. Just being able to block for a guy that's going to give you everything that you're going to get. That's what happened. You know, I missed a block where every 50 of them hey, man, stand your block. And John would say, hey, great play, great play, great block. And another favorite was Darren Perry. Darren Perry. Darren Perry. Darren Perry. Darren Perry. Great play, great play, great block. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Have any questions? Everybody's kind of looking at us and uh, you see that over there. Ask anything. Uh, who we are, what we do. Uh, everybody's kind of looking at us. I tell you, that last guy's talking about Dan Perry. You know, we got a lot of great players that's doing well as coaching in the NFL. We got Dan Perry with the Green Bay Packers and uh, Gary Brown is with the uh, Dallas Cowboys now. Yeah. Dallas. He, he left on Cleveland. I think he was in Cleveland and, uh, last year. So we got some. Uh, not only do we have players you know, in the NFL, we have former players coaches in the NFL. So you know, that just talks a little bit about this, this program, how we develop players that go out and do things well after that. Yeah, playing for you. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the Sunday Lion Network on the Magic Broadcasting. We're live here at the Grange Fair. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay. Right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Forever Lion Network on the Magnum Broadcasting. We're live here at the Grange Fair. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you feel locked into your lease or loan? Can I get out of here? Are you being held captive by your car? Please, get me out of here. Are you being held hostage by your horse and buggy? Get me out. Well, you are in luck. There is a way out of this mess. August is great escape month at Lion Country Kia. It's safe from your old car. And enter into a newer and nicer vehicle right now. Great escape number one. Get out of your car even if you're upside down. Great escape number two. Get up to $3,000 for your trade and it's worth. Great escape number three. Get the credit you deserve. And make that high interest loan you're in now disappear. It's the Great Escape, and it's only at Lion Country Kia. Get a 10 year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty. And get a new 2014 Kia Forte for as low as $129 a month. Forte got your style. We can work magic on all new Kias and free end cars. It's the Great Escape, and it's only at Lion Country Kia. And only through Monday. Lion Country Kia. Just off Shiloh Road behind Sam Plus. For a fortune Kia Forte, $129 a month with 37% down. Subject to bank approval. If I were to tell you that Mahindra Tractor is the number one selling tractor in the world, what would you say? But if I gave you reasons why Mahindra Tractor is the number one selling tractor in the world, what would you say then? Let's start with number one. Mahindra Tractors are wider and heavier for greater stability and safety. Number two, Mahindra Tractors offer more lift capacity for bigger implements, heavier loads, and brute digging force. Number three, Mahindra Tractors are backed by the industry's best five-year warranty for complete confidence in ownership. Number four, right now with welded equipment, the Mahindra sales event means the best prices of the season are now. And number five, so are the best Gives your percent interest up to, get this, 84 months. That's seven years interest free. The number one selling tractor in the world. Best prices of the year. 84 months of interest free financing. And, oh, did I mention the tractor industry's best five year warranty? So what are you waiting for? I've given you the reasons. Now go get your new Mahindra tractor at Weldon Equipment, your tractor headquarters. Hurry into Weldon Equipment, your tractor headquarters in Julianne, just seven miles from Milesburg exit off I 80, or on the web at WeldonEquipment.com. See Weldon Equipment at this year's Grand.
Keep the dazzling hand-finished piece of Pandora jewelry to tell us the world a story that only you can tell. They may put a smile on your face or a lump in your throat, but they're all yours. Your life has many moments, and Pandora jewelry helps each one to shine. Stop in the CO2 Unique Boutique in downtown Belfont or Lock Haven today. Or visit us online at CO2Boutique.com. Phone 814-353-4258 in Belfont or 570-748-2862. CO2 is a unique boutique in downtown Belfont and downtown Lock Haven. <laughs> A quick team for making vehicles fun to drive is in our soul, and the Honda Odyssey is no exception. It's quick, it's nimble, it's a van like no other. Expect nothing less than a smooth, quiet ride in the 2013 Odyssey. By design, the Odyssey can be done with the Every Odyssey is equipped with a powerful 3.5 liter V6 featuring variable cylinder management, a six-speed automatic transmission, Bluetooth, rear view camera, Feeding for eight adults and so much more. And don't forget Honda's commitment to safety. Honda is the only minivan with an overall five-star safety rating. This Honda has a great collection of 2013 Odysseys as well as incredibly low APR financing or customer lease programs. The Odyssey clearance is happening now, but only at Dick Honda. 2796 West College Avenue, Route 26 State College. The same great cars, the same great faces. We a few eggs, a lot of dirt, and last night's painstakingly prepared family dinner that ended in a standoff between you and your five-year-old. It's five o'clock, you're standing there with your refrigerator door wide open wondering what's for dinner. We've all been there. It's six o'clock. After a quick, easy drive into the scenic countryside, you're seated at a fireside table, enjoying a glass of wine with your chicken cordon bleu. The flat iron steak, smothered in bourbon onions, the big juicy hoobie burger, the award-winning spicy garlic ranch wings, and yes, the chicken tenders, with fresh cut, locally grown french fries, are all big hits. At the Hoogersburg Inn, you've found the place you've been looking for, a real neighborhood restaurant. As one of our out-of-town guests recently commented, I wish we had a place like this in our neighborhood. The Hoogersburg Inn, a local favorite where great food and good people come together. The Hoogersburg Inn, located off Route 64 between Belfont and Lock Haven. Call 814-383-2616. News Talk 970 WBLF. Y106.9. Here we're the Forever Lions Network broadcasting live here at the Santa County Grange Fair. Thanks for joining us. We are a 100% Trivia Lions Network. Goodbye to the players and the fans. We're the only network out there that actually is hosted by the former players at Penn State. So we're broadcasting live here along with Quintus McDonald, Brett Thomas, and Brett Thomas. And we're going to be talking to Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis, we're going to be talking to Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis, we're going to be talking to Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis, we're going to be talking to Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis, we're going to be talking to Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis, we're going to be talking to Stephen Davis. Stephen Davis, we're going to be talking to it's a great weekend. If you don't have plans, make them. If you make plans, change them. This is a place you don't want to ever miss out on. It only comes once a year. So, uh, a great family tradition for myself. Thanks for being here. We'll be talking some uh, football here. Uh, past, present, talking about the future here. Guys, we're going to have a, a great lineup this fall. And I uh, look forward to being able to have a lot more guests come on in here for the show each week. And uh, where do you guys want to pick up next? I mean, we, we've gone across the gauntlet here, but uh, maybe talking about some personal experiences. We touched on some ones that we've all had with Joe in the past, and uh, you know, maybe ramp it up now coming into the game ahead, that first season opener. Yeah. Uh, you know, Blair, tell us some of your thoughts. You know, that from your maybe from your freshman year to your senior year, and then the NFL. Uh, maybe uh, I'm sure the fans out here want to hear what it was like being able to uh, uh, that to hear those experiences. You know, because it changes each year. And uh, your experience is kind of dynamic, and uh, Chris and Stefan maybe do the same. Well, yeah, I tell you, uh, this time of year is very exciting as, as a player. Uh, you don't get a chance to go to the beach and enjoy the, the, the weather like everyone else. So you've been training all summer, and now uh, you're in camp for a couple weeks. So right now your body is a little banged up, but the season is, is, is right there in front of you. So uh, you got to fight through that. And what I used to do is I want to get my hands banged up you know, before the season starts. So that way I knew my body was gonna feel bad for the rest of the season and I can I can deal with that. Uh, so what I used to like to do is just make sure that the best condition athlete going into getting one in the camp. I make mean, sure I prepare it all summer, work on all the techniques, all the, the things that I'm gonna be asked to do throughout the course of the season. And if you're in great shape, you tend to uh, feel more comfortable out there. When, when you're 
you know, not in the best of shape. You know, start making many mistakes. Uh, so I try to eliminate that as best I can with making sure I was in great shape. That when I'm called to do something, that it, it was focused, it was clear. I knew what I had to do, and I was going to give it everything I had on every single snap. So that's how I used to want to make sure that I, I went into camp and, and with the right mindset uh, that I was going to do the best I can from the first snap. I was going to give everything I did uh, for my teammates and make sure that they was going to, you know, do the same. And, you know, Stephen mentioned earlier, you know, if he missed a block or got knocked down, you know, I, you know, I would tell him to stay on that block a little bit longer. But I remember encouraging him, too, because I knew he was going to run that play again. And I was to make sure that he dug a little deeper next time to go ahead and make sure he got that job right. done. And, and that's, that's how you have to do it. You have to, you know, get that positive reinforcement, that positive encouragement, because you only as good as that weakest link. So you want to make sure that we went in there as one unit to execute that play. And we want to make sure we focused on that one play and everybody knew that he was going to take it one play at a time and move that ball down the field. Absolutely. Touching on your NFL experience, where I mean, uh, when you, you know, starting to you know coming in there as your rookie season, a draft, uh, drafted, uh, you know, player into the NFL. I mean, what, what's it like uh, the, the shift from college to NFL? Uh, the biggest shift, in my opinion, is really the play of the offense and defense line. I think in, in college, you, now you have more. I've got to go back a little bit. But when we play, you may have had three or four. You know, nice offensive line, nice defensive guys. But when you get to the next level, all of those guys are the best guys. And and the number of mental errors diminish as you continue to go up. In college, you, you have some mental mistakes that you that film. Guys see it week in and week out. And it, it's just that in the pros, they have all day to study and learn what they're going to do that week. In college, you know, guys are still going to class in some universities. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're not. Yeah, that's right. So, so it's, it's a difference. So um, you don't have that, that same time of preparation to get ready for the game right. as you do in college, as you do in the pros. So that's that's the difference, I think. The speed of those guys, they, they like cats. And, you know, you, know, you throw them somewhere, they're going to land on their feet. And those big guys, you know, 300 pounds, and they agile on their feet. And that's the most impressive thing. And some of those guys will meet you on the sideline on the tall sweep outside. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas in college, you have one or two guys you know, in the whole you know, league that can do that. Well, Dennis, what about yourself? You know, you, I mean, you, you went through time to Penn State and then the NFL. Um, maybe we share a little bit about you know, what you did to prepare for that and um, the kind of mindset you had. I think uh, Blair touched on, on a great point. Um, and I mentioned it earlier when we were talking about preparation coming coming into camp here at Penn State. We knew that we were gonna have to to run and pass some some physical testing in order to even get your equipment and get into camp. So um, if you were if you were an athlete that did not go to summer school and you did go home or you had a job or something like that, you knew good and well what your times were that you had to meet. So preparation in and of yourself was, was uh, a high priority, absolute high priority. And then being a linebacker here, um, we, we, Blair talked about, you know, wanting to get his hands banged up. Well, we, we beat each other to pieces every day. Um, we, we, we were a very, very rugged and physical bunch of guys. Um, so we always, we were always, um, uh, beating up or uh, beating each other up and, and physically putting each other to the challenge. Um, so preparation coming in, preparation coming in uh, at that point was really all about mental toughness. The running was mental because you had to do it yourself. You had to, if you were not on campus, and, and um, I was one who, who was blessed to be able to go in and work so that I did have some money uh, during the school year uh, to go and get a burger or something without violating any NCAA policy. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That's a real shame yeah. to eat more than just yeah. a burger. Yeah. 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 I kind of said, hey, I'm going to remain silent on that. <laughs> yes, but it's please. a shame that a young person's got to worry about all those things. You know, yes, yes. It, it's changed today. And again, you know, we touched on the social media a little bit about how, how 
no matter where anybody goes today, the, you know, the camera's on you. And you know, how can it be for these guys to even want to go out on a town anywhere and worry about you know being seen somewhere and sort of question, hey, this guy took him out for dinner. Is that a violation? I mean, uh, you know, at what point is it, you know, where, do we, where do we go with this today? I, I think it's going to change here soon, hopefully, because you know, if you look at the landscape across the NCAA and we got some powerhouse conferences out there that's generating a lot of revenue. So it's going to come to a point in time where they got to, you know, uh, like the NFL, you know, share the wealth. Uh, Absolutely. So, uh, the, the NCAA, I just saw a statistic recently where they can pay, uh, I forgot the numbers, but some amount of money to every student in college once they graduate. And that, that money, this is what they already have saved up for. Contain a role almost like an endowment. Mm -hmm. um, so and it's a lot of money being generated. And some of these kids have problems, you know, uh, making it through college for one reason or another. And unfortunately, um, you know, they have to go through it. You know, I was one of those guys. You know, if I didn't learn how to cut hair, it would have been a struggle for me to get through. Um, That's why you got my two dollars. Even back back in the '80s, you know, '86, '87, we were there, and uh, uh, we didn't even have a, a home game or an away game. You know, we, we were given allotments of money, and that was to cover our meal expenses because we weren't getting we weren't going to the training table that night for dinner. So you know, even when we went to the Fiesta Bowl, you know, we got we didn't again get the same allocation, we got an allocation of money because. Uh, you know, this is to cover our meal expenses. You mentioned, um, you know, the, uh, the, the the home games and the away games. As I was coming up 80 and, and got off 80, you know, 26 to come here uh, on yesterday, I couldn't help but remember the bus trips out to Milesburg. Oh, man. Um, you know, on, on Friday nights. Uh, Miles that's that, right. was, that was that was lovely. I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when, when, you, when you talk about, let's get back to the question, you know, kind of remembering and talk about what, you know, the transitions and all of that stuff. Those are things, those are memories that we'll have forever. Absolutely. You know, um, I bet you each one of you right now is probably thinking about who your roommate was at some point right. out in Milesburg and, and a funny story. Um, you know, so when we talk about we are forever lying, we're lying forever, period. That, that can never change. Once you've been in a part of this culture and tasted this culture, you can't, you can't get rid of it. So we are forever lying uh, on the forever lying network. Well, you know, that, that would kind of be interesting. Maybe this year, uh, year in the stands, people will catch on to that. You know, we are forever lions will be the, the chant that we start to hear. Because, you know, uh, I think it communicates a bigger message about Penn State fans. It's a message about who Penn State players are. Uh, you know, the, the nice part about the Forever Line Network is we're able to bring a perspective that hasn't been brought before. Uh, here, people get to hear, you know, the locker room conversations uh, and uh, the practice uh, conversations and things in the radio like they've never heard before. And, and that's what we're looking to do every week here, bringing in different guests and different players. But that's all you're going to hear out here on, on this network is just guys who've actually been part of the program at Penn State. You, you, you made mention of, of, of that chat. I was so upset when the NCAA commercials start coming out and all these other schools are talking about we are. Yeah, wait a minute. That is so wrong. That is wrong on so many levels. So many levels. Yeah. So many levels. Uh, but folks, we, we uh, have to wrap up this segment. This segment has been brought to you by uh, Campus Scooters. Scooter rentals for as little as $34.95 per week. Save money and we'll have fun. Make sure to get your helmet from those guys too. Uh, it might not fit, or well, mine didn't fit, but I wore it anyway. So um, thank you, Campus Scooters, for supporting us on this segment. We'll be right back with your Forever Lion Radio Network. What's up, buddy? How are you? There you are. That's Come on down to the grandstand at 5 o'clock. Sign up for the Women, Come on, come on. Come on down and cheer them on. You also have more money because the more state farm policies you have, the more discounts you could qualify for. And those discounts could add up to as much as 40%. And if you'd like to put that extra money towards your retirement, 
with a kid's education, I can also help you with an IRA or college savings plan. So stop feeling like you're falling behind. Call me, State Farm Agent Mara Sando at 814-364-2181 today and get to a better state. State Farm. Sign? Pennsylvania's most historic cavern attraction, Indian Cavern, located in beautiful Spruce Creek, Pennsylvania. Indian Caverns has been family owned and operated since 1929. The caverns stay at cool 56 degrees all year and are one of the few living things in Pennsylvania, meaning it's still evolving. Families have asked for it, so we're excited to offer a flashlight for you. Right, we're going to need that support in two years. That's what we're going to need everybody to come out. We're going to need that support in two years. We're going to need that support in two years. Get some respect. 
Yeah, that's when it, that's when the game is played between the tackles. You want to have a good football team, you got to start with the offensive line, warm them up, and that's it. You got to set the tone early in the game. Right, and that's the strength of uh, uh, Zuniak, number 28. He's just, uh, he hits the tackles. He, again, he's not the fastest guy, but he takes every bit of daylight, does something with it, and he's a punishing runner. There's a lot of punishing tackles. Yeah, he's a punishing runner. When you win the camera, you're not going to be you're not going to like a Franklin Harris tackle. And I think that's going to allow us to do a lot of good things this year because we got some younger backs that are going to come back and get into the floor of things. And now we're going to have that dual phase. Yeah, you're going to have Belton, number one, who uh, yeah. is a South Jersey. I have to get a South Jersey guy a shout out. You know, yeah. And uh, also on defense, I think that the uh, D line, again, has to be really stout and that the good linebackers make their plays and to uh, just make sure that everybody is sound. You know, everybody plays their gaps, everybody does what they're supposed to do in all communication. That's what it looks like. Uh, just play a sound football. And big one of the things that Jim told us about too, don't be afraid to take chances and make plays. You gotta be able to make plays. And we had to do that the first two games last year. And then we started making plays on defense and everything else. Well, another the biggest adjustment in, in, in college football is made between games one and two. Right. You know, they get a chance to see themselves on film, see the mistakes they made, mm -hmm. and then they usually recover in that second game. But last year, we had too many things happen later in the year. Late in the year. Right. And put them up off right. Right. And the right. 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 The rest is history. Right? Yeah, that's history yeah. uh, absolutely. Now, 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 here's my one question. If you were Coach O'Brien, I saw Michigan use two quarterbacks and saw some other. Would you use, I think, Northwestern? Would you use two quarterbacks? Well, but, uh, James is very physical. These guys are getting a lot bigger, stronger, faster. So, in order to two through the entire season, you need two guys that give you a lot of your rest. Back in, in, you never know when someone's going to get hurt. You, know, you cannot play this game thinking about getting hurt. If you do, you can beat yourself before you even start. So, um, with what we got, the coaching staff that we have, I think, you know, it depends on the skill set that these guys bring to the table. Uh, we don't see them every day. We get a chance to see a couple snaps here and there, but the coaches see them every day. They know who can mentally handle it because I think. Early on, it was about managing the offense. You know, we got the big back that's winning, that he can pound the ball. We got tight ends that can catch the ball. We can go left to tight ends. Uh, so we, we have a lot of weapons. Yeah, you got Carter, you got Jesse James over 18. Uh, you, 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 they stretch the field at 84. They all stretch the field. Right. You've got, you got a number of weapons, without a doubt. Uh, but to get back to, to your, your original question, uh, I don't know if the player really answered that question. Uh, he yes, kinda, sounds like he could be answered. He did it because he's never seen the quarterbacks. I understand. Okay, well, um, for me, we got five snaps to them. Now, I got five snaps to them. And, and they all completed, they all, each one completed the pass, what I saw. Um, yeah, the footwork was great, everything looked fantastic, but when you're doing it in front of the skeleton, of course it looks good. Whenever you're, you're sharp, these guys have been at it for, for a month now, so of course it, it all looked good. And like, like Skip said earlier about kicking, there's a difference that he would have got. There's a major difference. So, um, and back to what Blair was talking about, um, the coaches had a chance to see them far more often, obviously, than we do. For me, I, I really am of the school that you know, the way you do it, you find a player that can stick with you. Um, and he stuck with John Schaefer. Schaefer came here had never lost a game when he started. Since the same grade. Since seventh grade. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. You know, he threw the ugliest football ever, mm -hmm. but it was easy to catch because it had no velocity. But he was a he was a, a, a winner. He was an accurate passer. Back in that, that, that time, you know, 
a real practice on uh, timing patterns. You see, like, we, we scripted this. Joe scripted a lot of uh, timing patterns. Uh, but that's because he was just like the jump skill. John was a good drop back passer, and he would just put the ball where he needed to without anybody being there, and he knew the receiver was going to be there. And so, time and time again, you look back to the films from 86, 87 team, you're going to see how those timing patterns are going to be in any kind of practice. That day and day out, the same thing over and over and over. And, uh, I mean, he had that touch. Absolutely. Let me tell you something about Shake too. I came in with him from one of the best high schools in the nation for football, especially for quarterbacks. And John Schaefer had extraordinary confidence and he had the extraordinary command of that offense. You know, he knew it like the back of his hand. But I would say more. It sounds like that uh, that uh, Skip is, is giving us a signal we could be wrapping up and even up another final comments. Well, I just want to thank everybody who did come out and listen. And that's a way Everybody's been out here at Please make sure you friend us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Forever Lives. Our website's uh, foreverlives.com. Send us an email. Send us a comment. We're, we're here to uh, bring you the best of Penn State football, past, present, and future, because we are Forever Lives. So be sure to tune in each week. Check out our website. And we look forward to being able to uh, bring you the best of Penn State football here. Uh, we'll be out at the home games, uh, the pre-game history shows, Friday nights at Damon's. And uh, we look forward to being able to see you all again. And we'll bless you, keep it, and we look forward to seeing you again here soon. Thank you, you wonderful folks. Appreciate you all. Thank you all for coming on, hanging out with us. We'll bless you, keep it, and look forward to seeing you again here soon. Thank you, you wonderful folks. Appreciate you all. Thank you all for coming on, hanging out with us. Thank you. 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 Thank you.